Today's update saw some massive changes to the Wilderness Agility course. What may be the new best in slot training method for agility XP rates is what I want to find out today. How much XP can we get? How much loot can we get? And am I going to get PK'd? All that is going to be discovered on today's episode. Now you may be wondering why am I in the Hosidius kitchen? Well, I thought this would be a great opportunity considering I'm going to have to be tanking uh, if PKers try to get me at the agility course to test out some of this new food. Now, this is the raw moonlight antelope and after cooking it you get uh, basically hard food if I don't burn them all that heals 26 hit points. Now half of the hit points are a little bit delayed but you can still stack it with a karambon and a cerebrew just like any other hard food uh, so that's that's the plan basically to make the best tanking food possible and if a PKer comes to get me today we're just gonna try to escape all right, now that we've cooked all of our food, I went ahead and set up a tag on Runelight for everything I thought I might need to do the Wilderness Agility course. Uh, the fastest way to get there is gonna be the Ice Plateau Teleport. These are only like 2K GP each on the Grand Exchange, so definitely worth buying if you're gonna do this. Um, I'm thinking we're gonna want a Wilderness Sword to cut any webs. I'll explain why here in a minute, but let me just get my inventory set up. I'm assuming all loot we get from the course can be stored in the looting bag. I don't have anything in there, do I? Okay, good. So that's empty. We're gonna take that if I lose it, whatever. I'm expecting to get PK'd, but hopefully we're gonna be able to get away. And I'm thinking really all we're gonna need is anglerfish. Oh, we're gonna want stamina pots for sure. So we're gonna want some stamina pots. We'll take three. Some angler fish. I'm taking the blighted just because they're cheaper. Uh, probably like, let's do six ceridoman brews. So that means we're gonna need three super restores. We'll take four just in case. That should be plenty. And the rest I want to do. Actually, we probably only need two angler fish. The rest I want to do moonlight antelopes and karambon. So we have some combo food. Let's get all this organized here. Just to make it a little bit easier. We'll have the stamina's up here on top. I have our brew chugging simulator up here. And that should be good. Yeah, I think that's a good looking inventory. I can combo eat if I need to. All right, so next I really wanna plan my escape. So let's find the wilderness. Here's where the course is. Now I really only see three ways of getting away from PKers. And I really think this deep wilderness dungeon might be the best play. But basically if a PKer starts to try to kill me, I don't think I'm gonna be able to log out in here because I know they added a ton of skeletons. Obviously logging out is gonna be by far the best thing to do. But I'm thinking the shortest route to escape is to get right here to the Wilderness Deep dungeon and then hopefully the PKer won't have the agility level. Oh no, they probably will. It's only 46 agility. But my, my thought process was maybe if I can use this agility course and maybe just, I don't know, run around. Uh, the agility course usually slows people down. So that's an option. We can try that. Obviously another option, if I can get back here on the mini map is gonna be to try to tank over to the mage bank. This probably is, now that I think about it, this might be even better. We'll try this first, the deep wilderness dungeon and try to log out within the dungeon. Hopefully that works, but if not, I think mage bank and just tanking uh, up until we can slash through the webs, which is why I'm bringing the wilderness sword might work. Uh, alternatively, we might also be able to go this way towards the Ice Warriors and potentially make it to KVD or to the Obelisk or something. Maybe just log out if we can gap them along the way. But I'm really thinking Mage Bank or the dungeon here might be the, the safest play. Um, so yeah, let's get to it and see if we can uh, get some good XP rates and make some money here.
Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention is I do have my quick prayers set up for protect from magic, uh, just in case, you know, we don't want to get teleblocked and whatnot. And we're using augury and protect item. So I can look at my risk here. I don't believe I'm risking too much. Most of the risk is honestly going to be in my inventory. I'm surprised there's no PKers just like waiting here. Well, let's see, if we go to items on death, if we have protect item enabled, killed by a player, we're only risking 200K. So like, I'm okay with this. Obviously we're gonna, oh, I forgot the 150K we need to get in. Let, I will be right back. Let me go grab that. Okay, I ran over to Mage Bank so that I could fix my inventory. I have the 150K now uh, in my teleport to get back. Now, as I ran over here, I will say there, there was a PKer uh, trying to kill me just to get through the web. So they're definitely out here. Uh, hopefully the amount of PKers will die down in the next coming weeks. Um, but yeah, we'll see uh, how viable this is, even is right now on release. I mean, I don't even know if I'll be able to complete a few laps before someone gets on me. But either way, we're going to do it because what I'm risking is really not too bad. This is the best setup I've been able to come up with. Um, you know, I guess now that I have the 150k, I'm risking a little more, but I think I pay this when I get over there, so that should be gone and I won't be risking that anymore. I'll just be risking basically my food supply, some useless stuff, um, and whatever I collect from the course itself. Uh, as long as my I don't get smited, um, you know, I get to keep my Barrow's Gloves, but if I lose the Barrow's Gloves, not, a, not the end of the world either. Uh, also, I want to apologize. I am just getting over a cold so if i sound a little nasally that is why but yeah let's let's try this out and get into it so here we go okay we have made it here i believe i have to tag this every lap and pay 150k you want to pay 150 to receive reward for your other lose payment? Yes. So I want to do that. Don't ask that again. I'm going to pay the gold. There's no PKers here right away. So, you know, I guess I'm going to time lapse the rest of this video until a PKer comes and we'll do an hour of this and see, see how much money and experience we can get. Me personally, I'm going to collect the tickets, which I will show you what those do here in a second. But the more tickets I turn in at once, the more XP I get, and there's a buff for turning in larger stacks. I, I believe if you have 61 or more tickets, you get the highest uh, XP buff relating to the ticket turn in. So that's it, that's one lap completed. Got 500 XP just like always for this course, and then you tag this thing, and you get your ticket, and did everything just go into here? Yeah, everything automatically deposits into your looting bag that's noted, so that's actually awesome and really useful, and you should be bringing a looting bag. But yeah, here we go. I'll see how much money I get after an hour and how many times I get PK'd. I'm also just now realizing I forgot to tag that little agility dispenser on my last lap. So yeah, that's very important. If you don't tag it, you're not going to get any of the loot, and you're not going to get an agility ticket. So don't forget to tag that. Here we go. We're actually going to remember to tag this this time. Boom. Another ticket. Got a clue scroll. I did read that this is actually not a terrible place to get clue scrolls. But yeah, I haven't even need, needed stamina. My, stam my energy keeps going back up to 100 fairly quickly. So I'm thinking uh, maybe just one stamina pot, just in case of PKers, but for the most part, I could have brought more food, maybe more brews. So I just realized, tagging the agility dispenser replenishes your run energy. So yeah, one stamina pot next time, confirmed, all you needed. So this is kind of funny. Um, Friend of mine logged in <laughs> and I was afraid he'd try to PK me, but then I realized it's uh, someone on my friends list. So I'm safe for now.
Doing a YouTube video. Please do not kill me. So every now and again, I'm taking some damage from falling, the skeletons hurting me a little bit. Um, but luckily, every time you complete a lap, you get some blighted food that's not noted. So I just keep eating that when I get kind of low, and then as soon as I complete this lap, it should give me another blighted food right here in this inventory slot, so I can keep going. Which is really good, so I can basically stay topped off in case PKers come. Oh, I didn't get one this time. You need to complete one full lap to receive your reward. Well, maybe next time I'll get it. Maybe it's not guaranteed every time. Or did it go into my looting bag? Let me see if I can check this real quick. Well, that's kind of annoying. You can't check the looting bag while you're in an agility animation. No, oh, it didn't go into my looting bag. Okay, so I'm thinking just you just can't get an unnoted piece of food every single time. But it's probably not too uncommon. Let's see if I get one right here. My auto retaliates off. Yep, there, got an anglerfish this time. So that's even better. So I'll probably actually just eat this one and overheal. Okay, I'm officially at the 15 minute mark and still no sign of PKers. Day of release, that's pretty surprising, but I will take it. Uh, it's looking like the rune light calculator is saying I'll get about 68 uh, tickets per hour which I believe is going to be a nice chunk of XP, uh, assuming that I can get them all turned in before I get interrupted by some pvp -er. So, at about the 20 minute mark, we got a guy here trying to PK people with just a rune crossbow and a backpack. I'm not really too afraid of him, but he got somebody. So clearly you can, you can make money here just PKing people that are not geared well uh, with hardly any risk at all. I mean, they're not gonna fight back. So I didn't even think of that, but I'm sure there's plenty of people that you can get without really even trying. A DDS probably would be enough and it's not like they can log out on you. So I might try to make a video doing just that with very little risk because I'm not a great PKer. Alright, we are almost at the 30 minute mark, and there is a PKer if I climb up these rocks. So let me see if I can trap, if I, maybe I can kill this skeleton and just log out. This might be the best way to avoid them, is just don't interact with them. Can I kill the skeleton and just log out? You can't go down, buddy. This is interesting. The only way out is to kill these skeletons and stay over here. Maybe we're gonna try. Can you get out this way? No, the skeletons just keep respawning. It's like a stalemate. Here we go. Oh, no, nope, another one. Oh, wait. Okay. You can't. Okay, he can come back up. I'm going through. I'm tagging. Okay, <laughs> we got around him. <laughs> but can I make it? I go down here. No, that's just not gonna work. All right, here we go. Looks like we have to tank test. We're gonna turn in my tickets first. And then we're gonna try to tank our way out of here.
All right, so let's get the tickets turned in. Or I think we can just hit redeem, turning in 33 tickets at a time. That's 7,000 experience. Oh, and then we'll just leave. Oh, I've been frozen from down there. this yep easy peasy so if they cross the bridge at the same time you are you could just log out that's actually the best way to escape i had no idea i just figured that out right now well i hope you guys take notes i'm gonna find another world and continue this just to see how much xp we get per hour but let's see while i've stopped here it looks like we're at fifty-one thousand xp per hour just from turning in those tickets. I didn't quite get up to the 61 tickets for the full buff, but I I turned in, what, 33? So that, that would give us some bonus XP, I'm pretty sure. All right, well, let's do 30 more minutes of this and see how much loot we get. All right, I managed to make it over to Mage Bank. We're going to re-gear up and finish our last 30 minutes, but just to check our looting bag, in 30 minutes, in the 30 minutes that we have been there, we've made a little over half a mil. So that's not too bad. Uh, I don't believe we got up to the 40k per lap. I believe you need to have 60, 60 laps in a row to get that 40k per lap, um, where the money would really start to escalate. But just so far, I mean, you know, if we're on rate, we're looking at about 50k experience per hour. Um, maybe that'll get up to 60k experience per hour. Uh, once I turn in the remaining like 30 or so tickets, I'll get in the next 30 minutes. Um, and probably about a mil per hour, just on average, assuming you can't find a way to stay there for multiple hours at a time. Like for me to escape that PKer, I had to go on the crosswalk, which will you know make you lose your streak. Um, unfortunately, uh, however, it, as, as we both found out or as everyone found out in this video, um, it is a very easy way to get away from the PKers, just cross the bridge and log out. Ooh, I accidentally forgot to bring the 150 K again. I believe I have to bring that every time. Let's see. You don't have enough coins to pay tag. Oh, I got a ticket for the last run? Well, might as well turn that in now, right? You need to complete one full lap to receive a ticket and pay 150 coins to receive a reward after each lap. Yep. Well, it's unfortunate that we got interrupted. I couldn't turn in a bigger amount of tickets and couldn't get up to that 40k loot per lap. Uh, at 61 plus laps in a row, but this is still a lot better than traditional agility methods and you make some money. So I looked it up at my agility level, I'm 86. The realistic XP per hour at Hold Sepulcher is about 60k XP. No looting XP per hour at Sepulcher, 70,000 XP per hour. Uh, and Jagex estimated XP per hour, 66,000 XP per hour. So this is probably going to be my new favorite way to train agility. Um, I do have to do Sepulchre just for some collection log stuff, but eventually I'm going to max my account. I highly recommend this method. It's not too bad with the right gear set up to escape the PKers even right now. Uh, however, I could see this being way better in the future once the traffic kind of dies down. I mean, I really think you can get upwards of 60,000 XP per hour doing this agility method. So it is definitely meta. I'd say they added a new meta way to train agility. Um, and you get money. You get good rewards while doing it. It's fun. Adds a little bit of excitement. This is a 10 out of 10 update. I really thoroughly enjoy it. 
And we have run into another PKer at about the six minute mark. Uh, I can literally just wait here and see if he tries to go around the course. However, I'm going to try to figure out how to log out. Ideally, I really want to be able to log out so that I don't lose my lap streak. Oh, he actually logged out. So if, sometimes if you wait here, they might give up. Unless he's, he might be duping me. He literally might be duping me. Well, fuck it. I got out. I'm gonna hop the worlds. There's gotta be a place that I can actually log out at. Maybe if I stand over here. Oh, wait. They opened this up. Okay, so I can actually probably log out and hop worlds. Just because I don't want them to come back to me. Let's just pick an Australian world, like this one, and that shouldn't stop my streak, I hope. Let's see if I can just continue on where I was. That can't be a PK, or he's got a trident of the swamp. Well, considering I still have the agility tickets in my inventory, I don't see why it would stop my streak. Doesn't a, a little chat box also pop up to see what your current streak is? Let's find out. Maybe I have to be unfiltered on the game chat? Let's get another one. Agility lap count. Let's unfilter this. My reward streak is one. Oh no! Okay, hopping worlds might reset your streak. That's annoying. Also, all my loot's been like filtered out. So let's keep it right here so I can kind of see what's going on with the streak. And a few minutes later, we've got another PKer who is on the other guy, so I should be able to get away from this guy. He's on him, so I will utilize this time to hop worlds. Which will probably reset my streak. Just like it did last time. We'll go through here. You know, I, th I find it unfortunate that Hopping Worlds resets the streak. I wish they would find a way to change that. Or I wish they would change that. I understand leaving the arena would reset it. But I mean, if I can get away from a PK or shouldn't I, you know, while staying in the arena with all these dang skeletons attacking me and preventing me from logging out, shouldn't I be rewarded by keeping my streak? Come on, Jagex, that would be nice. Can we keep that a thing? Because that got reset yet again. So I'm not sure if this is a bug or if I'm doing something wrong, but I'm noticing every now and again it's saying you need to complete one full lap to receive a reward and a ticket when all I've been doing is laps. So it kind of feels like occasionally it might not count one of your laps and you don't get rewards for it. And I couldn't really tell you why. Maybe it has something to do with falling down. Maybe I didn't click on the right agility obstacle to get full lap completion. That's my best guess, but I, I really don't think I did that. So I think there might be a little bit of a bug when it comes to uh, calculating full lap completions. So hopefully that'll get fixed if that does exist. Well, this will be the last lap before the one hour mark of actual in-game time running around this obstacle course. I did not count the time that I used to get away from PKers and to bank, etc. I am only counting one full hour of actually running around the course and after this lap, 
we will go back to the bank and see exactly how much XP we accumulated in one hour and how much GP is in our looting bag. So here we go, final lap, let's get our final ticket. That's about, so altogether I think I got a total of 71 tickets. That's another 8k XP right there, that's pretty good. And I can't wait to see what's in this looting bag here. And we'll see what we learn. Alright, we did make it back safely. Didn't have too much trouble with PKers in that hour. I think we ran into four, maybe five of them. Uh, only one of them even tested my ability to tank and get out of there. Most of them I was able to just log out on. Unfortunately, it did reset your streak if you did that. So let's see how much money we made in one hour at the agility course. Let's bank everything here just so I can take a look. So we've got in the looting bag almost 1 mil GP. And I do want to mention that for most of the rewards I was getting, uh, I was between 1 in 15 laps to 16 and 30 laps, which would equal to 10k per lap and 20k per lap. Only right there at the end was I, I had a few laps that were 30k per lap, but for the most part I was 10k per lap and 20k per lap because PKers kept coming and I had to avoid them, which would reset my streak. Um, so considering for the most part I was at 10 to 20k per lap, um, you know, assuming you could get 61 laps in a row and actually stay there without getting interrupted, uh, it should be three to four times this amount. So this could potentially be three to four mil per hour, uh, assuming you can stay past 61 laps without getting PK'd for, you know, at least an hour past 61 laps. So the GP per hour could be very good, especially for low level accounts, um, since agility is one of the first things people train. The other thing we learned is I gained a total of 56,600 experience. It says my XP per hour is 45.9K, but that's factoring in all the times I had to run away and log out. Um, but in the one hour exactly that I was running laps, we're at 56,000, almost 57,000 XP per hour, which that rivals Sepulchre. The, uh, and it even rivals the RD Knight course, which requires a really high agility level uh, and I believe the RD Knight course is only 62,000 XP per hour. This can be done starting at level 50, I believe, is the agility shortcut. So, yeah, Wilderness, 52. This is going to be your, your best experience per hour by far until you hit level 92 agility for Sepulchre. That is the only time when it really gets any higher. It's marginally higher if you do the Ardune uh, agility shortcut, which is 90 agility. You can summer pie a little bit earlier to do that course. But yeah, this, this has become the meta show, uh, agility course if you want good agility XP rates all the way up until about level 90. Um, so again, solid update. You're looking at minimum 1 mil, uh, sorry, 1 mil GP per hour. Uh, you're looking at about 60,000, a little bit less XP per hour, and your GP per, per hour could go as high as three to four mil per hour. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was informative. If you got anything out of this or just simply enjoyed hearing me talk while I'm sick, you know, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps the channel out a lot. And thanks for watching. Bye.